What is up, people? This is Wolferton Games, now doing episode 4 of TNO of the United States. Now we're here because Nixon retired, and now we're under the John F. Kennedy presidency. And as you can see, we're still doing the uh, South African War in this timeline. And... Just for safety measure, I also did all of Kennedy's presidency national focus trees because uh, I knew what we we all know what comes next after that once he, you know, kicks the bucket. So we're not going to be wasting our time with the focus tree. But I will say that given the new Ugly American update, I also have to contend with a Haitian civil war on my hands, ex helping Haiti expand its officer corps, support security forces, attract investments, stop PPLN activity from rising, and a lot more. At least I only have like two conflicts to handle. I also already finished the Philippine conflict way earlier before the episodes. So that's nice, I guess. Anyway, as you can see, the South Africa War is going pretty swell, I should say. Very swell. And I don't mean melancholingly. I mean, like, literally. Trust me. The OFN really is somewhat high with unity, thanks to the declaration of emergency war and... Oh, look at this! We, we got a lot of hawkish... We already finished the hawkishness, and our... Radical Repul- and our hardline Republicans are really terrific about it. Now all we're doing is just trying to balance our budget and maintaining a surplus in social spending. Which I have to say, given our GDP and the decree- and our- we had a sharp- I had a sharp rise of inflation earlier back in July of 63, but now it's just going down slowly. And we got a surplus of 2%. Oh, what's this? A message from Nixon to his successor, Jack. While the hands of fate often made you and I political opponents, I will always treasure the fact that you were personal that you were that you and I were personal friends during our time in Congress. That friendship is sometimes something that I remained mindful of during my time in the White House. Even if we do, did not see, agree on matters of policy, I never wished you anything but the most profound success, and my staff can attest. I have always spoken highly of you and your abilities. In the weeks to come, I hope you will look fondly on our time working together. Though the, process, though the press may, may say many bad things about my conduct in the coming weeks, remember that what I did was for the betterment of this country and the people. I hope you will remember that and the countless signs of support I provided you over these past years. With any luck, this business will soon be behind us both, and the nation will continue to think fondly of our many successes. If Pat or I can be helpful in any way, we shall be honored to be at your command. Dang. Sincerely, Richard Nixon. Dang. Dang, Mr. Tricky Nixon. You really, really put it out there for him. But here's the thing. It ignites feelings of mild distaste for the John Kennedy before being filed away for good. Man. Being a VP under Nixon for John F. Kennedy did not really treat him so kindly. The, the death of Plague... Fi Bonsong Karam, that's Thai, so apologize if I butchered the language. The storm before the storm, and Mick Intrier makes state visit to Washington. Huh. We hope this makes us the best of friends with the Scots. Oh. Oh, dang, South. Oh, dang, South. Wait. Wow, East West Africa and South West Africa really capitulated. Now all that's left is just Central Africa. That's just great. Let's see. Keep appealing to Roofer. Head on the firing line. Hmm. Not sure about the firing line, though. Because that's a deregulation kind of thing. And... Oh, well. Well, let's see. Republican hardliners, coalition support, terrific. Responsible Republicans are terrific. Terri oh, all four, all four parts are terrific. I gotta say. 
we're, we're really balancing things out on the home front. Let's see. Ooh, let's see. Okay, okay. I still got much of a Haitian support. Oh. Let's see. Our, wait. I wonder if I should... Okay, violence is 38 percent, 38, but the government has a bit of, okay, so. However, I still want to see if I could support. Ugh. Sorry about that. There we go. Toggle support there. Let's see. All right, hang on. Let me just uh, handle with this music thing for a sec. There we go. Okay, so now where was I? Oh yeah, back to the South Africa War. Let's, we're gonna make the final push, boys. Let's make it happen. Into Central Africa. Under Commander who? Frank S. Besson Jr.? I might have butchered that. I am so sorry. It seems like we'll be balancing the budget way sooner than we are. Oh, and look at that. We have office, army coverage, prison coverage, almost there, school and hospitals. The school, hospitals, army, and the bureaucracy are like at 100% coverage, which I have to say, I did not expect. Oh, I, oh, I almost forgot to check on the front. Oh, wait, no, that's the... Okay, so we don't need to do anything for the front lines as of yet. Oh, and it's a good thing too that Iberia and Brazil are also taking part in this war, which... Which I find kind of funny, to be honest. Oh, there's a number thing. <sighs> Hang on. Better put on Debug Smooth or something, because uh, I'm not really liking this. There we go. Thang Falchum named caretaker president of what? Oh, of Thailand. Let's hope it's a piece of transition of power. Reformation of Dutch basic law? Okay, hold up. Is this even a free nation or not? Hmm. Ah, here we go. The conscience of the Senate. Let's see what it has to say. Senator Philip A. Hart of Michigan was close to the end of his tether. It had been mere days since information of Nixon's scandals and corruption caused his presidency to collapse amid impeachment pro proceedings. God, how it all infuriates me, he thought. How avoidable it was, how pointless all this corruption turned out to be. If they wanted to ruin the MPP so badly, so sure, surely they should have done it through honest means. Honest means? That was another thing that Hart had always treasured as a Senate. It was the way the part, it was the way that Part, the, part, the partly admiring, partly jealous congressmen and senators of Capitol called him the conscience of the Senate. Wherever he went, he had striven towards honesty. He had fought hard in honesty on the ruined battlefields of Europe, just as now as he does in the Senate of the United States Capitol, not seeking advancement through corrupt means like the former president and, as, and so many others that did so for Philip Hart. Therefore, was this ruinous madness cut even more to quit quick than it did others how in the good lord's name with this um, with this american nation's care for its people if the president cares only about himself if this isn't a disaster i don't even know what on earth is it hart knew his tolerance was, fa was failing it was only so long before he could have to do something more about all of this rather than set rather than settling for being the capital's morality pet he also wondered what that would be like hmm that is actually a good question Anyway, let's continue. 
Yep, the South Africa War is still going swimmingly. We're still beating up the Africa child's butt. Hmm, develop programs. Wow, we're like in equal measure, almost. I, bet that, I think I better just focus on Arbitonite at Nord, Grand Oket Oest, and Tiburon. Because I think the state of Nord Est, and I believe if I recall... The tears of a continent. The man from Angola climbed the staircase two steps at a time. Surprised he hadn't been stopped yet, at the top he would find the office of a man they called Mr. Joao Kennedy, the American king or prime minister or whatever it was they had. The big boss, anyway. There it was, he was able to plead his case and perhaps they could help. A young man then stepped out of his office and looked at the Angolan with surprise. Sorry, this mysterious man said, but you can't walk in there. Was this John Kennedy? He tried to remember the lines he practiced in the mirror. Excuse me, are you Joao Kennedy? The white man looked at him with a furred brow. I'm his. I'm actually his brother, Robert. What is it? What is this about? Who are you? The Angolan struggled remembering the right words in English. I, 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 I am Angolan. I came here to America because of the Germans. They caused so much suffering. Since I came here, I asked for help for Angola, as all my as all say America is for freedom, but nobody lets me speak. I want to speak to Joao Kennedy for my people. Robert Kennedy had heard about the killings in Angola. The Germans had slaughtered people all over the world for 20 years, and people had become desensitized to all of it. But he thought, maybe it was worth trying. Even if they only saved a few people, surely it was still worthwhile in the end. Surely he had a duty to convince his brother. Kennedy smiled at this Angolan. Well. You sure don't have any appoint have an appointment, but why don't you come in? I'm sure we can spare a few minutes for your concerns. Hmm. And I say, we can if we can make the world just a bit better, then we should. For this part, all my volors will tre will trend to be more internationalist for the issue on foreign policy within the span of two extra weeks. I'm loving it so far. I'm loving it. This is what we need, an internationalist foreign policy, all while I'm juggling domestic things back home. What's this? Okay, the battle's ahead. John F. Kennedy shifted uneasily in his chair, in the Oval Office. Nixon resigned only recently and he was still getting used to sitting on the side, on this side of a resolution desk. Now. Not only did he have to manage all problems afflicting the government, he, ha he also had cast an eye head to the next election, where the sharks were already circling in. He felt like a man being dragged in all directions. Look, looking ahead to 1964, Kenneth, o Kenneth O'Donnell, a close aide, said, It looks like George Wallace is consolidating most of the support on the MPP's far right, the national, basically the nationalist side, but the pact is such a madhouse that we may not, we may not know their nominee for even some time. So long as it's not George Romney, Ken Kennedy heavily said heavily, I think we're in decent shape. We do not want to run against George Romney. No vices whatsoever, no drinking, no smoking, nothing, but quite, but quiet prayer on the decision to run with a message given by the Almighty. Or shall I say, the God Almighty. The President dried, laughly dried. Can you imagine any of us doing that? Doing this sober? Chuckles from the staff present in the Oval Office followed. Washington had a way of driving a man to drink. My friends in Michigan, the president's brother, Robert, broke in through laughter. Tell me that Detroit press won't be backing him for any run out of state. They're still in our corner for now, at least, or want to keep a good governor close to home. The president's eyes closed in relief. One fewer fret for, 19, for, for 1964, or 64, thank God. Wallace was a bigoted, a bigoted populist, was beatable, particularly given his limited appeal beyond firmly segregationist quarters. But, but, but Sir Romney had the potential to not only unite the MPP under a moderate, but also a poachable, reliable Republican-Democrat voter base. Okay, now, about Africa. 
Oh, good. Now another one. Let's read it. Democracy in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. has always had a rather interesting relationship inside the U.S. of A. As capital of a nation, it isn't officially part of any state. Instead, a district governed by the U.S. Congress as a whole to ensure that any local government couldn't overpower the federal seat. When it was a half-built, when it was back then first a half-built swampy square of land where few lived, they could help it. This presented a few problems though. But as the nation grew, so did Washington, with now over 750,000 people living inside within its borders, more than 11 states in the Union from the 1960 consensus. It seemed hypocritical that the population of the capital of world's most important democracy shouldn't be able to vote for their leaders. The recently passed 22nd Amendment did change that. The citizens of Washington, D.C. now had the right to vote in presidential elections, granting them no more f elect electoral votes than the smallest state in the Union. So just three electoral votes for the 64 election. The city is a buzz of activity as voter registration drives are taking place, and polling stations and school gymnasiums, fire stations, and community centers are all taking place as a how as well, as a high turnout is expected among the residents and the citizens of the city. For many, this is a long time coming, a historical injustice finally righted. For others, this was only the very first step. For a while, they can now vote for the resident of the White House. Other avenues of political representations are still missing. D.C. gets no member in the House of Representatives, nor two senators of the other 50 states that have, and no ability to help change the Constitution that had long been denied from them as their rights. Washington doesn't even have its own mayor for crying out loud. Instead, the city is overseen by a disinterest committee of Congress, so you could tell that there actually is still work to be done. You know as the old 1776 saying goes, or like the American Revolution saying, no taxation without representation, or NT NTWR, for short. Hey, that actually sounds like a good acronym. NTWR. NTWR. That actually sounds like a really good acronym, if I do say so myself. But now let's focus back on the South African War. What about the front? Oh. Yeah, while, while the South African War is still going on... Let's see, we can actually do some... Oh, and also, I almost forgot, I also forgot to say this, but uh, Spear technically won the Civil But our boy Spear won the Civil War. Yep, he won, yep, our boy Albert Spear won the Civil War. Again, I don't know why, but I was actually banking on Bor Borman the win this time. I don't know why, but oh well, you win some, you lose some. Germany restores control over Central Europe. Huh, Reichsprotectorate Bohemia, Moravia, with the Netherlands and Denmark were territories of a German where Germanized prov proved the most successful. When Germany fractured, those territories ended up a state of political upheaval. Huh, it seems like the old line can still war, but I'm also actually glad, and I will say this as a tangent, that they're actually removing the old uh, German Civil War mechanic. Because I'm actually thinking it's a lot better to actually have like clans, like certain um factions in the government vie for power rather than just causing the nation to break out as a whole like like a horrible rash let's check on the CIA intelligence I'm actually kind of surprised about this one <laughs> CIA director Alan Dulles man this man's face look like he does not really mess around <laughs> and that's saying something Oh goody, we ran a good campaign! Let's try the Rockies next. Okay, let's see. Let's strengthen pro-American sentiment in the Caribbean area. Where else? Oh. Oh, do arm ship... <sighs> Arm shipments to Magadon. CIA begins training for new operatives. Oh, dang. Let's see. Okay, this is a lot to take in, but let me first say that 
I also had to get rid of Burgundy because one, I do not like the, f I don't even see Burgundy as even being a thing if the Germans won World War II. Not even in the slightest. Also, it's our reform, it's our reformist French boy Antony Panay in office. Woo! And he actually revoked the Treaty of Vichy. The people of France take the streets in celebration of the government of incumbent French President Antony Panay. Woo! And in a historic moment, he proclaimed the Treaty of Vichy to be null and void, bringing an end to the 15 long era of hardship and humiliation inflicted upon the French people and the nation by its subjugators in the German Reich. Even though the treaty had been effectively nullified by the Burgundian invasion of France, the President's recent move has nonetheless met with overwhelming support from all across French society, only garnering the opposition of the infamous Germ Germanophile reactionary of the PPF. The move has, be has been hailed as many international commentators as an essential step in Presidential Pinay's ambitious plans to restore French democracy and cut the state out of German spear. The old order slips, slips further away with each passing day. Woo! Go in Tony Pinay. I'm counting on you, you great paternalistic conservative. Okay, the fires of suffering. Wait, wait, what is... Oh. Oh, this is a war story. Oh, from the South Africa War. I wanna, let's see how this goes. No polls updated. Okay. The fires of suffering. There is no silence in the Heidel, for it is broken by crunching of boots on the sandy road through the rocks and dust. The land without water, but for that deep in the earth's embrace. The soldiers fearing to step too far in the arid vastness and be lost to the agony and solitude of the high places. Backed, in, backed by the bleak vastness of the sky, the wary Americans pass through the trail. Okay, this is way too much, but I think, yep, anger is like fire, and it burns it all clean. Okay, I could see the reason why. Oh. Ah, the West Russian Revolutionary Front declares war on the Tatarstan Republic pass. Oh, okay, okay. Me oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think I remember now. I think I remember now. It was also... Ah, here we go. Oh, dang. South Africa War. Yep, the Colombian Civil War. Yep, and the majority of Russia is just... They're still in the perpetual state of war, which I still find very concerning. But I, let's hope that Magadon wins, because I'm counting on that. favorable committee assignments but all my, but all my smoke and mirrors are terrific I'm not gonna do this now ah a line nova so ah a line nova so burst with the OSN nice Nova, Nova's old burst could be of use. Hmm. Mm hmm. I just like how the free state of Magadon is just still holding out. It's kind of funny. Oh, he's, oh, Sang Fa, I, I'm not even gonna say. He will maintain the course that Marshal Fibon charted? That's the bigger question. Okay, back to global conflicts. Oh, oh boy. Okay, we ran a good RDC campaign. Let me do this one at a time now. Let's campaign back in the deep south. Okay, okay, let's this one. Ah, here we go. It's another DC story. I'm actually liking these so far. A cause for celebration. The Dirksen building had been very quieter since Nixon's resignation, which was all the better for the brothers who now found themselves enjoying dinner once again. 
but now President Kennedy sat together with his brother Robert, who still served faithfully as a senator. I'm proud of you. You know that. The circumstances aren't ideal, but I can think of no better man to be president right now. Robert couldn't barely contain a smile, thinking of all the things we can finally accomplish. Come on, Bobby, you're embarrassing me, John chuckled, who beamed nonetheless, but thank you. I know I can always count on you. Always. I'd leave you for the MPP or like I leave always I like I'd leave you for the MPP or anyone else, especially when you're about to give this country the change it so desperately deserves. Robert's enthusiasm seemingly infected prompted more laughs from his brother. Now now we have a lot of work to get through before we can set things in motion for the country. His looks became more serious, more determined. The coalition's image is somewhat tarnished at the moment with Nixon's fiasco, so I've arranged some trips across the country to shore up support. At this, he reached into his pocket and pulled out a long itinerary of events, and ev itinerary events in various states and cities and handed it to Robert. Of course, we do have the election to worry about after all, Robert frowned before reverting to a smile. Come on, Jack. I suppose we can just enjoy this meal before your big tour. You've earned it. And so the brothers sat for a while longer, enjoying their food in peace. As the time came for them to leave, Robert quickly glanced at the list and noted his brother's first destination. He smiled at his brother one last time before they departed. I know you'll do great, Jack. I'll see you vi see you when you get back from Dallas, Texas. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. We're heading into some assassination territory here, folks. Seems like JFK's first destination is Dallas, and I don't think he'll be able to finish his shore up support. A fond farewell indeed, but we all know what happens next after this. Given the Civil Rights Act was passed in 1962. Yeah. Ooh boy. Robert, you're not Robert Kennedy, you're not gonna like it. Surf Mania sweeps the nation. And yep, I called it. We definitely called it just two or three days later. Southern Storms. The crowns lining either side of the street alongside Dealey Plaza seemed like a colony of angry righteous ants, at least from the rooftops, which which um clan member Bobby Cherry had been laying on, adjusting his scope and looking down at the people below him. He could almost make out some faces, though despite the total lack of identical features with perhaps the single exception of raised fists or furrowed brows, they could all be totally lacking of any kind of features at all, and even the blind man could tell of their hatred and anticipation of Kennedy's reconciliation rally. It was in the way they stood, the way they focused on the street ahead of him, and the way they seemed to totally neglect everything else around them. Luckily for Cherry's plan, Sitting atop the depository, it seemed like the whole world was happening beyond him. Nothing could touch him, and he could affect none of it. That is what life has left, had felt until this very moment, being left unable to leave the mark on Malaya, the Civil Rights Act, and now even his own hometown. The notion that he could reclaim control over his life was liberating. Even some people below him began to scream and jeer. It was almost time. Even above the crowds to the point of him being nothing but a speck to him, he could hear their anger, their spite, all of their accumulating in, es in the escorts, finally pushing, filming, filing around the corner, and the president's car rolling in view. Lining his eye with his rifle scope, Cherry focused the sight on the back of Kennedy's head. A beat passed him. The crowd flung insults at the president, though too quiet to hear. We're almost certainly at his presence. If, it, if his uncomfortable demeanor had any part to play in, another beat passed him. Cherry then pulled the trigger. The president's car sped off with the front half of the escort. As the crowd dispersed like smoke after a rain, and, um, and the amorphous mass disappearing into, the, into its own pockets, fleeing the scene. And just like that, Cherry left an impact on the world indeed. JFK now dies. The RDC still becomes the ruling party. Public elections will not be held. Replace the American, American malaise with the TAD, the American despair. With this main driver dead, the administration's push for civil rights starts to derail and stall. Many voters will tend will trend more liberal on the issue of civil rights within the span of four weeks. Man, John F. Kennedy has died. It just took it just took a second for this man to die, and now we got this lame duck, John McCormack, for president. I don't even like John McCormack. He's a lame duck. Remain calm. Oh. Oh, I do apologize. I actually didn't, I actually almost forgot I didn't actually have the, uh, 
I didn't actually have focus autocomplete off by mistake before recording. I do apologize. <laughs> well, at least we did the remain calm and stuff. And healing a broken nation? <laughs> I'm sorry, John McCormick, but you're a sitting lame duck. I don't even like you. That's just, that's just how it is. I don't like you, Mr. McCormack. You're boring. You bore everybody. And I'm just saying that in a not so nice way. Okay, let's see. Should we move past Nixon? MPP election primaries? Hang on, hang on. How long will the red British flag fly? Wallace finally gets his chance? We're actually gonna move past Nixon. We ain't gonna save his dang legacy, are you nuts? <laughs> we ain't moving his le- We ain't gonna save his legacy. We will abandon the legacy of Nixon and cut a f new path for the future. Tackling the current issues ahead will demonstrate to American people they were still capable of ruling effectively as we always have. The fall of Leopoldville of Central Africa, and the war still trudges on. Yep, we will be salvaging our image in the eyes of the nation. Voters will trend both Democrat and Republican within the span of only one week the same way. Yeah, I have to say, we're actually doing pretty well. We're gonna move past Nixon. <laughs> and I'm gonna say he was a crook. <laughs> Even though Southern Democrats may not like it. I'm gonna ju I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Ah, but here, we actually are now in the crossroads, and I will say this. The work goes on. Red and white balloons have colonized roofs of the hall of a Republican and RD of RDC convention, where, as the booming commotion indicates, the coalition has come to decide who will be the next RD presidential candidate, ignoring the no hoppers. The two frontrunners are Democrat LBJ and Republican Wallace F. Bennett. Young men wearing all the way with LBJ and Bennett for America badges glare at each other through the wafing cigarette smoke. Of course, as it always has been since the Senate of Rome, the real decision takes place behind closed doors in a meeting room far from the hurly-burlies of the convention hall, where a handful of craggy white-haired men smoke cigars and ponder which man will be more likely to pay, play ball with the big dogs. If they were going to get past Nixon's disgrace and the year of free presidencies, they need a candidate who will be willing to galvanize the public encounter the suddenly powerful MPP puffing away. They made the decision of who might govern the United States for the next four years in office like they were deciding what to have for dinner. And for this, I will have to stop the episode right here on the 29th of August, 1964. As you can see, this is where for you viewers and subscribers to help me decide. Should I go with Wallace F. Bennett to provide stability, or should I go with the Democrat all the way with LBJ? You viewers and subscribers will help me decide. Anyway, this is Wolferton signing off, and have a wonderful day. And don't forget, there's also the community tab about this, where, where I'll link in the link in the description down in the description and pinned comment down below so you could also vote on that too so as the work goes on let's get to work to see who i'll go, go with for as a 1964 president for the rdc anyway hope hope you ladies and gentlemen and internationalists have a great and awesome day